Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is now re-engineering the chess classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and I couldn't leave it. We're having a look at another Janowski game though not a particularly successful one for uh, our hero. This is uh, David Janowski against Frank Marshall from their match in Biarritz in 1912 which uh, Marshall won uh, plus six minus two equals two. Um, yeah, those two players did not get along very well and um, uh, somehow um, Frank Marshall emerged uh, somewhat better from their meetings, although uh, he also lost quite a few games along the way. Um, this was a, a brilliant little game that I discovered, uh, thanks to a tip from, um, from a viewer actually, he suggested that uh, you know, when you're looking through lots of games you can uh, use uh, chess base to uh, classify it according to beauty. Uh, and um, well, I was uh, I tried that with a few databases, and uh, well, I saw that I had a lot of uh, of, uh, of beautiful uh, David Janowski games already, but there were a couple that had uh, that I'd missed, and this was one of them. And uh, I have to say, it is quite a stunner. So let's have a look how this all happened. Um, so Janowski was white, Frank Marshall was black, and we actually got a Petrov, which is uh, well a little bit solid for um, you know a very aggressive player like uh, like Marshall. But um, yeah, Janowski and uh, Marshall had a, a bit of a theoretical battle in this match on the uh, on the Tarash, and uh, in general, Marshall emerged uh, uh, pretty well from it. So takes d6, knight f3, knight takes c4, d4, d5, bishop d3, bishop d6. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much a, a main line nowadays. Um, a couple of games, uh, um, uh, Marshall played uh, bishop g4 first, and after castles played uh, bishop d6. But in this game, we got uh, bishop d6, which was played a couple of times uh, in the match. Um, and now, yeah, the normal move here is to go uh, castles, castles, and then c4. And after c6, uh, well, there's, there's various stuff. Uh, dragon against stockfish, dragon played... Uh, Rookie one, and uh, Stockfish played uh, knight c3. Lots and lots of theory in this. Um, Janowski played the move uh, c4 straight away in this game, um, which might just transpose. Uh, that, um, uh, but uh, here Frank Marshall uh, decided to uh, well to try and exploit it with uh, a cheeky little bishop check here. Um, funnily enough, in game, this was game uh, three of the match, um, in game five, um, Marshall went castles, and he and Oski went uh, c5, bishop b7, and knight c3. Um, takes, takes, and then b6, uh, yeah, c takes b6, a takes b6. And in all fairness, yeah, you know, black was doing uh, quite all right here. It was quite uh, quite an interesting game. Um, what uh, Janowski pr tried to do, he played queen c2, hitting the pawn on uh, h7. And after h6, he played queen d2, hitting the pawn on uh, on h6 there. Um, rook e8 and castles. Um, was quite an interesting position, but um, somehow uh, uh, Janowski went wrong quite quickly and uh, Marshall ended up winning uh, quite easily there. So, um, but in game three, Marshall played bishop b4, which looks very, very natural indeed. And uh, funnily enough, they had a game um, a year later um, in America, I believe. Yeah, in uh, Manhattan. And um, after a bishop b4 check, uh, Janowski played knight d2. Um, Marshall played knight takes d2, not particularly necessary. The engines just want to go castles and bishop f5, you know, and you've got all sorts of threats uh, lined up uh, against this bishop on d3. But uh, Marshall played knight d2, but I mean, that also turned out to be just pretty much a Petrov, really. <laughs> you know, at uh, castles and uh, White's got a slight edge here, you know, but um, uh, Marshall managed to uh, to hold it. You know, it's not the best way of playing for black, but uh, yeah, exchanging that many pieces, uh, yeah, you know, you've always got a good chance of, uh, of holding it. But in this game, uh, Janowski played something quite interesting. He just played the move king f1 and now Marshall uh, castled. Um, yeah, the engines uh, like c6 best. Just uh, you know, just uh, keep your center solid and uh, maintain that knight on on an outpost. Castles is reasonable, but uh, probably not uh, the very best move. And uh, here, uh, Janowski sort of um, went a little bit wrong, and uh, you can understand the reason for it. But uh, yeah, just just uh, yeah, tactically, it just works out uh, very very badly in actual fact. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, really, what uh, what Janowski should have done is to go a3. Bishop b7, and now play this plan of taking on d5 and playing queen c2, 
hitting this knight on uh, on e4 and, and intending to go knight c3 after. So if you go knight f6, we go knight c3, uh, maybe queen h5, and now the engines want h3. And uh, you know, whilst looking to go king g1 and maybe even something like g4 at some stage, and the uh, the queen will be a little bit awkward. Or um, you know, you could go knight e2 to f4, or even something like bishop e2 and knight e5. I mean, basically, you know, although the king is, um, uh, White's king has been, uh, you know, forced to uh, uh, to move. Um, yeah, White's got some uh, some extra time. Black's queen is a little bit awkward. You know, the engines thinks it's about balance, but maybe a little bit better for White. You know, it's um, one of uh, one of those positions. And the key about playing a three early is that you uh, you know you force the bishop to uh, to e seven. Well, Yanovsky played c takes d5, queen d5, and queen c2 in this position, and uh, the idea is similar, and I'm pretty sure that he was thinking, well, you know, if I keep this bishop on b4, it's loose, and I can, who knows, maybe I can even hit it with a queen a4 or something like that at some stage, you know. Um, I'm, I think he was, uh, you know, thinking very much tactically here and thinking, you know, I, I should be able to uh, to get something out of that loose bishop on b4. But as it turns out, um, yeah, uh, well, yeah, it just turns out to be... Uh, um, to be uh, um, rather awkward. Um, after queen c2, uh, Marshall played rook e8, and now we got knight c3. And, uh, well, to be honest, uh, in this position, uh, Marshall uncorked a tactic that's pretty well hidden, I have to say. Um, I could... Well, in a long game, I'd hope not, but uh, certainly in a, in a blitz game, a rapid game, I could definitely imagine falling for this one. Because after knight c3, Marshall played... Knight takes c3, b takes c3, and you might want to pause the video, test your tactics. Queen takes f3 here. Wow, that is a move. Queen takes f3. What is the idea? Well, the idea is that if you go g takes f3, then um, uh, there is bishop h3 check, king e1 and rook e8. Sometimes chess is so simple. And uh, rook takes f1, checkmate. So, yeah, just, uh, but it's kind of, I don't know, yeah feels kind of out of the blue uh, to me really so what can white do here well yeah the engines uh, um, as always uh, find some um, some decent ways of playing and white can play it in two move orders uh, the key idea is to go h4 cover h3 also stop black from playing bishop h3 uh, at any moment and threaten to take the queen and then you know if the queen uh, retreats like to d5 or to g4 we take on b4 and well we'll see uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see that uh, happening you can also take on b4 first and then play h4 later um and this is yeah i mean it's not good for white of course but at least white's surviving here um uh, yanovsky played c takes b4 um knight c6 was played um yeah i mean bishop h3 is possible in this move order um which looks very strong but we just go uh, rook c1 in actual rook g1 rather cover this threat we're threatening gh and after knight c6 we go check king h8 and queen d3 and somehow we're, we're we're just covering everything you know the best black has got is to just regain the um uh, the piece but okay you know white's pawns are split it's not great but uh, you have got an extra pawn there so it should be uh, sort of okay for uh, for white but marshall just played uh, knight c6 just leaving that queen on freeze on uh, on f3 and, uh, well, here is basically where um, uh, Janowski had to play h4. Um, and, for example, yeah, let's say queen f6, bishop h7, bishop d3, knight b4, queen c4. Well, I mean, black's going to get that light-squared bishop and then develop his pieces. Got that weak pawn on d4. The white king is on uh, f1. I mean, it's clear this is a very, very nice position for black. But the engines, uh, well, you know, yeah, they were losing a lot of games with white. But, uh, you know, it's probably not hundred percent hopeless yet you know even if uh, it's just uh, very very unpleasant um but yanovsky played um, bishop b2 here um and then marshall um yeah marshall played the move knight takes b4 it's not the very best move because here in actual fact you could throw in the nice little bishop h3 so uh, obviously gh3 queen h1 is checkmate and when you go rook g1 now we go knight takes b4 it's just slightly uh it's even stronger than uh, than the other way uh, simply but um, but okay you know I mean uh, um, uh, knight takes b4 is also pretty strong here bishop h7 king h8 and now Yudovsky took the queen on f3 
Um, and this is actually, uh, you know, pretty deep sacrifice from uh, from Frank Marshall, actually, because uh, this really has to be calculated well, you know, because uh, if this doesn't work out, then, um, uh, you know, <laughs> why it's just a piece up here. So we give a check. The king's forced to a very uncomfortable position and now knight c2 and bishop c2. And, um, well, I mean, what are the uh, tactics in this position? I mean, we've got two possibilities. Either we're going to try and get a rook on this file and deliver mate. And it's very hard to get rid of this bishop. Or we're going to do something on the open e file and, uh, yeah, probably combine it against uh, these two bishops here. So um, Marshall went rook e2. And, um, well, the engines now think that bishop d3 followed by bishop f1 would be the best, just trying to evict that bishop from, uh, from h3. But obviously, you know, this is a... A pretty fantastic ending for uh, for black and uh, the engines were wi winning every single one but Yanovsky played the the only human move you can play really rook c1 let's keep that extra bishop on c2 um rook e8 and now um yeah you can well i mean a move like bishop b4 i mean f5 was being played i mean b2 is also gone there's only one move that a human player should play and that's bishop c3 covering uh, um, e1. And now Marshall came up with something which was quite astounding. Um, it wasn't really necessary, to be honest. And I do wonder whether whether this move... I mean, Marshall was a really good tactician. Eh? I mean, um, obviously, uh, you know, he had some uh, some skills that in comparison to modern players were uh, were lacking. But, you know, uh, you, you play through enough of his games, you're, you're pretty impressed at, the, uh, at his uh, ability to spot traps and tactics and that sort of stuff. Um, so he did have a very simple way of playing, which is rook takes c2 and then rook e6. And there's absolutely no way to stop rook g6. Um, but what Marshall went for was even more beautiful in a way, really. He played the move rook 8 e3. Um, what is the idea of this move? Well, obviously, we're attacking this one. We're also attacking the pawn in f3 and coming through here. So this is pretty good. And uh, the lovely point is if f takes e3, we just go rook g2 and rook, uh, rook c2 here. And, uh, well, after king e1, we've got uh, rook takes and we're picking up this one. So it's not not as good as uh, obviously as rook takes c2. I mean, there's no mate, but uh, um, but still, yeah, pretty decisive, really. I mean, a really gorgeous move. And um, so bishop b4 was played by um, uh, by Janowski, and now rook takes f3. So um, yeah, what we're aiming for, yeah, rook takes f2, and then either rook g2 or rook f1 checkmate. So um, uh, bishop d1. Was played by um, um, was played by uh, Yanovsky, and now the lovely move rook f6 was uh, was played. We're just threatening uh, rook g6 check, of course, and uh, well, if bishop e2, we've just got rook g6 check, bishop g4, and rook takes g4 and checkmate. So there we are. Yanovsky resigned after rook f6. So uh, I mean, just a, a little, a short but uh, but quite brilliant game, I thought. I mean, I, I love this. Uh, this um, this uh, queen takes f3 uh, tactic, um, you know, it's, uh, um, I'd expect to spot it if um, if I was uh, on the white side, uh, to be honest. But still, you know, when you're playing through the game, uh, whizzing through the game and wondering why, uh, why was this a brilliant game according to chess base, then, uh, yeah, that one definitely uh, hits the spot. And, uh, yeah, I mean, although it wasn't the, uh, the very best move, I do have to say that... Um, uh, from an aesthetic point of view, um, I have to say that uh, you know being a piece down and then uh, playing this move rook eight e three is uh, is quite beautiful, you know, and uh, really very impressive indeed. And uh, well, that got uh, Frank Marshall off to a to a great start in the match uh, with the black pieces, and uh, well, he won the uh, the uh, the match very convincingly indeed. So there we are. I hope you uh, enjoyed that little interlude in our uh, series of, uh, of Torch games. If you enjoyed uh, this, then uh, why not uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new book, New Books, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement. That's been out for, uh, for a year or so now and also Reengineering the Chess Classics. Brand new and full of stuff like this, you know, real uh, treasures from, uh, from classic games. Some well-known, others not at all well-known, but uh, definitely deserving of, uh, of some engine attention. And uh, yeah, just using, you know, the engines like this to, to discover amazing things, you know, also to praise uh, the players for uh, their uh, incredible imagination, but also to find, uh, yeah, things that, uh, well, that nobody's ever seen before and nobody would ever dreamt of if it wasn't for the engines. And uh, otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you at the next videos. Thanks for watching.